Hello, I would like to show you my self-made table saw that I made for about 150 euros, not including the circular saw. It is easy to make and I get precise results with it. In this video I will show you what it can do, all needed dimensions, how I made my own and what you need to make it yourselves. Hello and welcome to my first video on YouTube, in which I would like to show you my self-built table saw. Um, there are hundreds of DIY table saw videos out there on YouTube, so what's so special about this one? I personally find the idea of using these aluminum profiles as rails, as a fence, and also um, sliding blocks um, worth showing because it makes the whole thing so simple and the build so fast that you can easily finish it within one weekend. Um, the construction is also very forgiving. Um, you can, for example, adjust the angle between the fence and the side afterwards with some screws. Um, yeah, that's also why this build is not a full building instruction or time lapse of the build. Um, I'd rather like to show you the basic ideas behind it, what you need to take care of, and uh, yeah, I hope you enjoy watching it. So yeah, here it is my chip wood and aluminum profile table saw. Um, yeah, what can it do? So um, the table can be also used as a, as a router table. On this side, probably in a later project, I will add a router. Um, it has got a fence um, that you can slide over the whole length of this table saw. Um, the fence itself has two screws on this side, um, but if it's only locked on one side, the other side still wobbles around, so it has got a locking mechanism on the other side too. Uh, the blade itself is, um, yeah, has a total height of uh, 57 millimeters more or less. So you could probably cut wood up to a thickness of 50 millimeters. The angle of the fence can be adjusted with these three screws to make it absolutely parallel to the blade. You can also change the angle of this blade. Um, it's not the most comfortable thing, but it works. It also has two T-tricks that allow you to put a miter gauge in there. I have this one that I bought on Banggood for around uh, 35 euros. Um, yeah, so and the precision of it uh, is quite okay. I just cut out four um, of these plywood pieces and in a 45 degree angle glued it together to see if the, the angle fits. Here you see the tools that I used, a screwdriver with some bits and uh, drills, as well as a circular saw with a guide rail, but you can also just use a wooden sled instead, a routery tool, some clamps, some glue, and also a jigsaw or hand saw. Here you have a short overview over the materials that I used in this project. I will also put a link in the video description with a bill of materials. As you can see I used two of these wooden trestles. A base plate made out of chip wood and a lot of aluminum profiles. The long ones are used as a rail and also to improve the stiffness of the main plate. Then uh, we have a third aluminum profile which is will be used as a fence and connected to it there's a fourth one to hold the sliding blocks, four plastic ones and some others to keep them in place as well as two of these sliding blocks that um, will be used as a locking mechanism. Inside this fence there goes a, another aluminum bar that is used to activate 
the locking mechanism. On this side there is also a metal piece to hold a screw and the locking mechanism in place. The fence is covered with these 3D printed um, plates and I also have some other 3D printed part that will be used as a locking mechanism. Of course you also need a lot of screws and hammer nuts. Additionally you can put some of these T-tracks to the top side um, if you want to use a miter gauge for example. I glued it in place with epoxy resin but you can also screw it. Um, and last but not least you of course also need a circular saw. How did I make it? Um, I had this piece of chipwood lying around but you can also use um, plywood or whatever you want. It doesn't have to be very stiff because uh, I will put some aluminum profiles under it to strengthen it. So yeah, um, at first I cut it to the length and the uh, width that I uh, wanted to have. So here you see all overall dimensions. Then I figured out a good position for the circular saw. Somewhere in the middle so I could cut from both sides or um, leave one side for a router in a later project. Um, this uh, step also doesn't have to be super precise because uh, uh, the fence can be adjusted afterwards as I already mentioned. In order to make a tight fit for the circular saw I built kind of a fence out of wooden pieces around the circular saw while trying not to move it and uh, routed out the area of the base plate of the circular saw in a depth of about 3 millimeters. Now that the lower side of this table saw is finished, it's time to make the fence. Therefore I cut out this triangular piece of wood, which has got the same thickness as the base plate. Here you see the dimensions of this part. I drilled six 4 or 4.5 mm holes in it, and three slightly bigger holes, 6 or 7 mm in the middle. It's also important to countersink at least these six holes. Um, yes, I also drilled two holes in on the aluminum profile. I then attached the triangle wood piece to the short aluminum profile with uh, these six M4 screws, the short ones, and attached it also to the fence with these three M4 screws. As you can see here, I put all the plastic sliding blocks to it and fix it with other sliding blocks. I used two M5 screws to screw this metal piece to the other side of the fence. Both sides of the fence are covered with these 3D printed plates.
here's how it works. This 3D printed part is screwed directly to the aluminum bar and holds these two um, connecting rods in place. These connecting rods translate the movement to this lower disc that holds a M5 screw in place and when you turn it the screw is being screwed into one sliding block in here and also into the aluminum profile. Now that the fence is finished you can use it as a guide to router out the area of the cover plate and also the cutouts for the T-tracks. If you want to use more than one T-Trex, it's absolutely important to align them parallel. If you want to use a cross-cut sled, for example, therefore I made a slightly bigger cutout than the T-Trex and filled the gaps with epoxy. I hope you liked this video. If you have any suggestions how to improve the table saw, I would be happy to read it in the comments below. Thanks and goodbye.